everyone, we are Arcangineers, a group of students of UBC. For those of you who don't already know about the history of binders, this is a great opportunity to learn about it. We promise you will have fun during this short video. Now, let's get started. There are many evidence about the use of binders throughout the history. First evidence of the use of binder material was found in Israel and linked all the way back to 12,000 to 6,000 BC. It is not known for sure how this combustion occurred, but most likely it was made by accident. The use of binder was not found again until thousands of years later. Calcining limestone, a natural deposit of binder, was formed in a spontaneous combustion when there was a reaction between limestone and oil shale. Calcining is defined as heating to high temperature in air oxygen. Limestone is a sedimentary rock, made up mostly of the mineral calcite, a form of calcium carbonate. Limestone has numerous uses and building material is one of them. It is extremely durable, but does, however, absorb water. And since it is a carbonate rock, it is highly reactive when exposed to acids or even mildly acidic rainwater. And it can suffer substantial deterioration. Sumerian Civilization it was one of the early civilizations of the ancient Near East, located in the southern part of Mesopotamia. Because there are practically no building stone in this area, but there is a lot of clay, Sumerians built their buildings using mud bricks or fire bricks. Sumerian masonry was usually mortarless, although bitumen or asphalt was sometimes used as a binder with the clay. Clay building materials are robust, stable, and as a result, especially durable. Their lifespan is more than 100 years. And also it's clear from the literature that the durability of asphalt mixtures depends, at least in part, on the attention between the bitumen and the mineral aggregates. The Old Kingdom of Ancient Egypt is notable as a time of rapid changes in the society and also in the buildings. In the architecture of Ancient Egypt, mortar mainly fulfilled two functions. It was used as a binding material between the stone blocks as a, as a sliding material to reduce friction of heavy blocks being put in the position. But since the quality of shaping of building blocks was rather low, the mortar along with a mixture of small pieces of stone was also used to fill the gaps between the blocks. The use of gypsum mortar is ignored from the times of the Second Dynasty. It mainly consists of barn gypsum and sand frequently with cheap limestone. Yet quality of such plaster was rather low and its durability depends on the humidity of the place. At the end of the Third Dynasty, some innovations were introduced in the applications of building stone and binder of far better quality, and they result in construction of previously unthinkable structures, for example, the Step Pyramid of the Djoser. Furthermore, the ancient Egyptians were the first to use lime mortars, and they used it to plaster the pyramids at Giza. It is well known that mortars consisting of lime and water, in order to set and harden, need to remain in the open for the chemical reaction of lime with the carbon dioxide of the atmosphere to take place. Ancient Greeks were probably the first to use hydraulic mortars. In other words, mortars which, when mixed with water, can set and harden in the air as well as into the water. These mortars would set more rapidly and increase the durability. To do these mortars, Greeks used volcanic ashes from the island of Chia or Niziros in Greece, or from Pozzuoli in the Greek colony in Italy, close to Napoli. This blend has the ability to set and harden into water, not dissolving as lime mortars do. In that sense, the blend of lime and volcanic ash is very relevant to cement and could be considered as the presence of contemporary cement. 
Today, Portland cement with the addition of pozzolana is being produced and widely used, the so-called pozzolanic Portland cement. It appears that a blend of this time was used to construct a waterproof tank in the temple of Athena, or to construct a port in Piraeus, in Zia. The Roman Empire Lime It was widely used by the Romans. They knew how to make hydraulic lime by adding materials such as volcanic ash or powered bricks to lime. Romans also used quarrying techniques which had become further advanced during this era. Cement The Romans copied the technology from Etruscans and Greeks and improved it dramatically. They broke the manufacture and use of a lime-based cement named pozzolan. This is a hydraulic cement that can set when mixed with water. Moreover, some natural additions such as animal fats, milk or bot were used. After the fall of the Roman Empire, knowledge of cement was lost until the 18th century. The resistance against the elements may be due to one of the concrete's key ingredients, volcanic ash. Concrete. Magnificent quality concrete resulted from the extensive use of artificial porcelanic mortars and concrete. In addition, placement, compaction and workability properties of ancient Roman concrete contributed to its magnificent survivability. The technology of the Roman concrete is very similar to the modern concrete. Their construction techniques must be better than our ones, judging by comparing the results. The concrete they used consisted of three parts, plastic hydrated lime, artificial or natural pozzolan, and a few pieces of first-sized rocks. Despite the success of Roman concrete, the use of the material disappeared along with the Roman Empire. Concrete structures were seldom built during the Middle Ages, suggesting volcanic ash wasn't the only secret to the durability of Roman concrete. As we have seen, binding material in the general sense of the word can be described as a material with adhesive and cohesive properties which make it capable of bonding material fragments into a compact whole. To sum up, through the long history of human beings, several types of binding material have been invented sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. Matte, gypsum, lime and lime porcelain mixtures are some examples of ancient binding materials. Whatever type of binding materials the ancient civilizations used, it can be seen that those structures built by ancient binders, particularly lime porcelain mixtures, have survived for several hundred years. It can be claimed that even at that time, architects were aware of the importance of the durability of binding materials and in their mortars. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you like our content give us a like and a comment. Till next time.